That wake you up? I hope so. Did that wake you up? Thanks. Is that better? Yeah. Harry, would you care to lead us in the flags, ladies and gentlemen, if you feel sand? Take your covers off. All rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, Nice to see a good crowd here tonight. I think you will find the program to be a lot of fun. Did you work um, on the Nova Levy? Levi? Not yet? Okay. Just want to make sure you're under pressure. Okay. <clears throat> Our technical chair is in Xinhuang, Hong, China. So he's not here to give you a detailed technical report. So I'm going to play <coughs> technician for the night with two major things that we have going. For those of you that have um, <coughs> observed our efforts with the six meter repeater, the new cavities are in place on the mountain. A new antenna is in order and the vast array of workforce for installations is gearing up to do the installation. Their union is complaining that we don't have enough money to pay their salaries, but we'll get there. And in addition to that, where's Bernie? Right over there. <clears throat> You've all heard and commented about some of the vicissitudes we have with our new repeaters. Some of you may, may remember that in April of last year, I jokingly commented that we were going to implement some new technology and that we would have a learning curve to go with it. Uh, we did that. And we found a variety of problems. No courtesy tone on some modes. That's built in by Wuhan Yisu. That's how they built it. There's no easy fix. And some strange noises that we've traced to uh, not a fault, but a characteristic of the repeaters for which Yesu knows they admit they have a problem, but they don't have a fix for it. Yesu did come out with a new firmware upgrade that Bernie has implemented, is implementing. And Bernie has one of our repeaters, he has one of the new controllers, and we are going through the bake-in process, if you will, to figure out, okay, now that Yesu has a product out, which they sold very aggressively, which is what companies do, how are we going to implement permanent fixes? We'll have full control capability, we'll have what appears to be the potential of programming the controller to announce verbally a variety of messages like on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday of the club meeting night, stating at some frequency that tonight is the park meeting night. So hands, applause to Bernie for figuring out all of them. And I think you'll find your paycheck will increase this month. <laughs> this is not easy. No. What we're faced with is a brand new technology architecture that Yesu put on the market, and they too don't have a complete understanding 
of what hams traditionally want, like the courtesy meal. Why did they not implement that when they started? I don't know. Maybe in Japan they don't need it. Those are the things that we're learning. What was that, uh, Mr. C.W.? They're all courteous in Japan. You don't have a very courteous. Thank you. <laughs> we're trying to make sure. We're trying to make sure that the new controller will allow continuous wave modulation with the call sign. Where's the membership chairman? Mr. Chairman. Over to Glenn. For appropriate comments. Okay, um, as of this afternoon, we have um, 197 regular uh, current paid up memberships. Um, 21 heads of family family memberships and 17 family members and one honorary life membership for a total of 236 members, which is down, I think, eight or nine since last month, and that's because people's memberships have expired and they haven't renewed. So go to the website. There's a page called Join Us. There's a link there for clicking to check your current registration. and. Uh, Click on that, it'll tell you when your membership dues expire. Um, there's a link for bringing up the application for filling out a new form. You can use PayPal to pay for it. Simple, easy. It gives me a chance to collect new and fresh information on you and check that what I've got in the database is accurate. And if you go to a meeting and you want to pay and you don't have cash, our treasurer, wherever Tom is, can now accept uh, credit card payments with his uh, iPhone. Thank you. Any questions on that? Okay. I want to encourage you. How many of you have participated in answering the request from the ARRL to communicate with our elected leaders about the Ham Radio Parity Act. Please raise your hand. Well, I see many hands that haven't gone up. How many of you don't know what the Amateur Radio Parity Act is about? Okay. To make a long story short, courtesy of some interest by <coughs> the uh, Homeland Defense Agency, there has been renewed interest in making sure that ham radio is an available resource for emergency communications in the event of a terrorist attack. That started about three and a half years ago. Through the ponderous labyrinth and mechanisms of our federal government, you all know how well that works, <clears throat> the Homeland Defense Organization asked the Federal Communications Commission to do an analysis and study of what the amateur radio community could bring to the, to the venue of communications. And one of the things that came out from that study is that a significant number of members of the amateur radio community who have a federally issued license are prevented from exercising their federally granted rights because of homeowners restrictions on antennas. Out of that, there's a move going through Congress that would make restriction of antenna, a blanket restriction of antennas in homeowners associations unacceptable. I said blanket. The story in Poway was one of the things that we prevailed through was the city had a blanket prevention on towers. Blanket, meaning if you want a tower, ain't gonna happen. 
homeowner associations are seen the same way. If you go to the ARRL website, that's ARRL.log, those of you who don't know what the ARRL website is, and you enter the search Ham Radio Parity Act, you will take them. The website ARRL.org, not log. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I said org. Regrets. You'll find a page wherein you select the mechanism by which your particular zip code will track to your elected representatives and a form letter is available. You will find it unusual that the ARRL wants you to mail them a letter to the United States Post Office. Why would you do something so silly nowadays? Anybody know? Because if you just send an email to Congressman Schmaltz, nobody reads it. They get thousands of them. So the ARRL collects all the mailed letters and the representative of the ARRL walks office to office to office in Congress to ask that people get behind the Parity Act, which will prevent homeowner associations from a blanket prevention of amateur radio antennas. That is not a reason to walk out of here and tell your homeowner association, I'm going to put up a 500 foot tower. No, that's not what it says. It will require that they make acceptable accommodation for you to exercise your amateur radio license, which is a federal grant, no different than when people were given a federal grant for land in Nevada, because they were supposed to go out there and use the grant to develop their land. Same thing with amateur radio. Any questions? I hope those of you who haven't done what I talked about go write your letters. I am. We have some club sponsored activities coming up. <clears throat> Joe, you may have to come and relieve me here by my voice, but too many hours on the road today controlling traffic as a sheriff volunteer. <clears throat> we have an interfaith fair on April 23rd. Some information in scope is a, perhaps a little confusing. No, Park isn't sponsoring it. Park is sponsoring a club activity at the Internet Fair, at the Interfaith Fair. And those of you who show up and sign the attendance roster will earn participation points. How many people don't know what a participation point is? Okay, Park historically has allowed your presence at activities <coughs> to accumulate points. Remember, the time you show up, you get a point. And at the annual picnic, those points translate to opportunities for the picnic drawings. So, want to get a few more points? Show up at the activity. The address of the Interfaith Fair, which is uh, <coughs> down in the Oceanside is in the scope. Likewise, there is an operating day scheduled <coughs> on May 4th. The operating day historically has been performed by the Six Shooter Club and the Palomar Club primarily, one down at Fry's in downtown, one up at Fry's in St. Marcos. Where is the greatest number of geeks congregate at a Fry's? St. Marcos or downtown? Well, it sure is downtown because at St. Marcos you mostly get people who are completely unaware of technology. 
with some exceptions. So, the board of directors agreed with the Sixth Shooter Club that this year, the May operating event, we would participate with them at the Fries in downtown. And the fall operating day will be done in San Marcos and they will participate with us up here. Details in the scope. Field day. Ryan, where are you? Stand up, Ryan. AG6CF is our field day chairman. We have a preliminary plan. A little bit of this was discussed briefly with Greg, who was the field day chair last year, but not much. Preliminary plan. Notice the word preliminary. That means it might change. <laughs> and there are some things happening, but right now we're locked in to the Valley Center site we had last year looking at the demographics that have changed in the club. Once upon a time, we ran 7 Alpha. Remember that, Dennis? When was the last time you went to field day? 94? Well, no. 2002, as I remember, up at Stan Rohr's house. But all of those guys are pretty much doing other things now. So. We're thinking of a three alpha operation. One station running CW. That's da 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 da. Those of you who don't know what CW means. Things like Ron, K2RP, did it dum dum did it? One station running CW on all bands, and two stations running single sideband on 20. 15, 40, and 80 as an effort to attract hams. All of you know, hopefully, a technician who wants to maybe get a general. Bring him to field day and let him operate on side man. Same things we did last year, picnic on Saturday afternoon. Leftovers, well, I shouldn't say leftovers. Selected specialties for dinner Saturday night, and then the remainder of the selected specialties preserved overnight in a temperature controlled environment for breakfast on Sunday morning. And we'll need help to set that up. Oh, any questions on that? Oh, and a go to station, which doesn't quote count. Unquote for the number of stations you have on there. More on that later. John. You. AG7CF. Big <laughs> Paul. <laughs> you do know your call sign. You put a J on it. I'm John. I'm a simple soul and I do simple things. We've noticed that there are a lot of new people to ham radio in the group and we also know that Kevin is working with scouts and things like that and it just uh, hit me that it would be nice to have an activity where new people could get out there and actually use their radios rather than sit and talk about it. So I'm envisioning an activity uh, tentatively scheduled uh, for Saturday, May the 7th at 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning at a venue near here won't say which one it is yet, outdoor. I checked it out, had the permission, and uh, it has good simplex coverage all the way through. I envision having six experienced operators out there with their HT set on one specific uh, simplex frequency, and they'll be scattered throughout this venue. And then the people, and they will also have a log sheet. And then the people who are going to come out and play the game, young people or, or new people or whatever, you know, I'm inviting the new people to the group to come. I will give them a map, give them a sign-off sheet, and give them one of the frequencies. Their job is to set that frequency into their radio.
call control on it. Control, this is AC7GK. Control will enter the name on the log. You gotta be logged in. Otherwise you can just wander around because you're gonna find these people. And if all you do is wander and find them, it doesn't do the radio any good. And control will give some sort of a cryptic idea of where they are. For example, if I'm running it in a mall and uh, we have the control in the tool department of the Sears store, he could or she could get on and say, I am where we take tools seriously. <laughs> but it's a way. And so the uh, searcher will figure that out, will find this person, walk up to them, give them the frequency that they are using to make sure that they have the right one. The uh, control will sign up on their sign-off sheet and give them the next frequency. And then they call that frequency and liberty lip off, they go to the next one. And they'll be setting six different frequencies into their radio, being on the radio, getting guidance, going and checking in and out. And when they get all of that done, they come see me again and I'll give them a certificate, which it just commemorates the day and the fun thing they did and the achievement that they made. So, the people I talked to, I, I talked to one mall cop about it. He's so excited, he's, he wants to come join us. I'm going to invite him. But at any rate, it could be a fun activity. But I sort of need to have an idea of who would be willing to participate. So I put up a uh, clipboard here where you can sign in with your name, your call sign, your email address, and then whether or not you want to be a searcher, a new person who is actually participating in it, if you want to be one of the six control operators, or if you want to be an Elmer and come out and help people who might be having a little trouble setting uh, simplex frequencies into their, into their uh, computer. So, into their radio. Any questions on that? Uh, it's tentative, it's up in the air. Let's find out how many people would like to do it. Get out and have a good time. Any questions? Thank you, AC7GK. Thank you. All right, thanks for that. Uh, Charlie gave up a microphone because his voice is giving out. So I'm Joe, your Vice President, K6JPE. And uh, the scope, many of you may have noticed, came out a little bit late this month. There were some technical difficulties and uh, the, uh, that's pretty much all it is. Uh, we, we'll try to get it out on the Friday before the meeting, but this is all volunteers and uh, paychecks will be docked as appropriate. So um, that's all on that one. Uh, there is an ears auction coming up May 23rd. Uh, oh, April. April 23rd, sorry. Uh, April 23rd, year's auction at, do we know location? It's in the scope. Okay, check your scope for more information on the year's auction. Uh, goody table, you have anything to say for us? Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few items this uh, month that are free. I'm just trying to clean them out. Uh, mostly all came from W9FQN. And uh, what doesn't get out of here tonight uh, is going to go find the recycle bin because uh, I've hauled it over here a couple of times already. Uh, we've also got a couple of pay items, a nice uh, transport case for a go box and uh, rolls of solder and things like that. And we've got some uh, rigs here on the floor. Anyway, and we've got uh, servo stuff. Looks like uh, good robot making equipment and things in the back. So uh, we've got actually two goodie tables uh, over here. So uh, anyway, it's a nice, uh, nice turnout tonight, and I'm finding good homes for some of this stuff. Good deal. Uh, there is a second goodie table in the back there. Uh, all of the stuff. It hasn't quite found new homes yet, but there's a lot of good stuff there left. Uh, a lot of it was in the scope. Um, and if you wave your hand, who's selling it? You, yeah. Greg, is it? Yeah. yeah. So Ed's waving his hand back there. See him and he'll. Half of it goes to the club, 110, so you got 55 bucks so far. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, what is your call sign? KM6ARO. Kilo Mike 6 Alpha Romeo Oscar. Amateur radio operator. Amateur radio oh, operator. Oh. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, uh, the one uh, other thing about operating day. Any members who come and sign in on the roster for operating day down at Fry's in San Diego will, in addition to their uh, 
participation point be entered to win a Woshan, Waxen, uh, however you pronounce it, HT radio, VHF, UHF, dual bander. The information on that uh, specific model is in the scope, but hey, free radio. Uh, do you have that pre programmed or? We will hopefully have it pre programmed with all the San Diego stuff. Oh, yes. You have to show up in person to sign the roster, but you do not have to be present to win. Okay, and uh, introductions. Repeater site and technical are both uh, Mark, KF6WTN, who is not here tonight, I don't believe. Um, the scope editor, Michelle, W5NYV, back there in the back. Can't miss her. And another fantastic scope this month. Just keeps getting better and better. Um, your director, KK6FRK, Kevin, I believe he's doing a scouting event. And is not here. Yeah. He's oh, he's back there. Oh, there he is. Yeah, Kevin back there. Thank you. Hello, Kevin back there. Thank you. Um, and John, you already heard from AG AC7GK. Yeah. yeah. And, and I was correcting it off of what I was reading because that's not what it says. <laughs> uh, membership chair KJ6ZQH Glenn, you, you already heard from. Uh, treasurer is Tom W0NI, who waved earlier. Uh, see him, he'll take your money. Secretary KK6EED Sandy, up here taking notes diligently. And I'm your Vice President Joe K6JPE, and you heard from Charlie, our President, NN3B. Do we have any visitors tonight for the first time? Can we welcome you? Yes? Can you stand up and tell us uh, where you're from and are you a ham? KI6SYM from Vista. KI6SYM from Vista, and your uh, handle? Your name? Michael. Michael. Okay. Michael. Welcome. Michael. Okay. Oh, Michael. Welcome. Uh, any other visitors? How about new hams? Just got your license. How about any upgrades? Just got a, uh, oh, fantastic. Michael. Hotel Charlie Lima. I got my extra. H O I H C L H C L H C L. For now, Dennis and I are working on the future. Okay, fantastic! Congratulations. Any other upgrades? No. Okay, uh, Charlie. How how well it works for that? And I'm I'm not. Although I've taken part in some contests, I'm not a serious contester, I guess. Uh, this this sh diagram shows the, the, the normal setup. On, on the left hand side here you have the control station whereby you have your key or microphone, the small control box and a control radio. Now the control, this particular radio is just a control, this particular unit is just a control radio. There is no, no radio part there's no radio as such within this within this box. You could also use a standard radio as a control unit, in which case you're still not using the radio radio sections, but it will act as a controller for another remote radio. Um, so that connects to the radio, and then you link to that links to internet. You go through internet, links to another control box, which controls the actual remote radio. And the remote radio can have, can have quite, quite, it can be quite a sophisticated setup. You can have a power amplifier. Uh, this particular unit does not allow antenna rotation. That would have to be done on a separate link. And there, there are a couple of other points that it doesn't allow you to do with this particular setup. In this case, the control is a little more complex because I don't have a direct internet connection from from the control box into into uh, the local area network. So what we have is we have the K3 Mini, which is this device, the control box, and then it's linking via Wi-Fi to a cellular phone, which I have to have on the floor here, 
and then that's going to internet via a mobile hotspot. So it's a little more complex. And there's quite a few radios involved in it, if you think about it. It's, the upload and download speed is not, is not that fast, but I'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. Um, this particular remote radio is running 40 through 6 meters into a, into a stepper DB18, which is at the, which is at, the ha at, at my house, and you can go on, we can go on here now. And this is 40 meters through that antenna. I also have a, a 100, 160 meter antenna, which is, as it says there, is offset fed, and it's effectively a beam antenna because of where it's positioned on the hill. But, uh, and it works extremely well to the east, and doesn't work at all to the west. Um, as it points out on the bottom, end, that's not a perfectly accurate statement, but it's approximately right. Uh, this setup shows the setup at, at the house, actually. This is this is a deep, uh, this this is a Rome 25 tower, and this section here that you can see is the tune is a is a tuner set is, is a remote tuner, which is tuning the low frequency antenna, and then you have the uh, stepper antenna. This is the amplifier. And then this is the actual radio that, uh, that we're listening to. This radio receives and transmits the signals. It also has the displays. Now the displays are not available at the moment remotely. Uh, if I go back to the other point, as you can see, there are remote, there is the pan adapter on there. Unfortunately, it's not available remotely there are two possible ways of incorporating this, to add a camera that uh, is looking at those displays and can transmit that over the internet so you can control it. You can also get an, a, a video adapter card which uh, will also transmit it over internet. I haven't decided how to hook that up at this time, so it's, it's still left under unconnected. Okay, when I started out I thought that this was going to be easy. I have a, I have a uh, 200 megabit link to Cox and they talk about only needing a few, few hundred kilobits per second. So I thought, okay, that's not going to be the issue, I don't have any problem there. When I hooked the setup up, I got the control of the radio really easily, that worked fine. But when it came to the audio, there were breaks. About once a second there would be a gap. And this continued for a long time. And I started looking very carefully at the signals that were being transmitted over internet. And the first thing I came across was someone, someone somewhere in Asia was sending messages pinging non-stop to see what they could find on my network. Well, I guess after some time they got bored with that because they weren't getting anywhere, so that stopped. But I still had, the problem didn't go away. And I spent a lot of time talking to remote to remote rig and they could not see anything wrong. They tried interfacing with the radio and they found, they commented that it was really slow. So at that point I started saying, well, I have a high speed, supposedly high speed link via Cox. So why, why is it slow? I mean, I, quote, I quoted to remote rig, it's, it's showing at times 200 megabits per second, which it was. But 
if I studied it carefully and started looking at it, it was also dropping down to a few kilobits a second at times. And that turned out to be the issue. Although they sell you this high-speed link at 200 megabits per second, there's a couple of words in there that say up to, and up to also includes zero. Uh, so that, that can be a little bit of a problem. Anyway, after several modem changes and all sorts of other things, and then going out and checking it and coming back and all sorts of excuses, I finally said, well, it appears to me that your system's too slow and I need to change to, to a DSL system or something else that might be a little faster. At that point, they went away and came back the next day and said, we've changed your service. It cost you another $3, but we've made some changes to it. I'm not totally sure what they did, but they did correct the problem. And I didn't pay for the full $1,000 business line either. So, but anyway, as a warning, it may not be what it appears to be. Um, other methods of, of control, this, this network here, this, this is using the Alicraft radio directly. If I turn this, I bypassed something here that I meant to do, I don't know quite where I missed out. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn this off. And when I turn that off, it turns off the radio at the house as well. The whole thing has gone off at this point. Um, and I just want to pass this around, so let me do it. I can pass this around. This is the radio. You've got total control of it at the house on this tablet. As you can see, there's a little knob on it. If you turn it, you will tune the radio. Um, it, awesome. This is supposed to work on the phone. tablet is supposed to be direct work on the phone but I, I've spent a lot of time with remote rig discussing the S6 because the first, when I first got it it worked fine but then the S6 was up, upgraded by T-Mobile and it all dropped out it didn't work anymore so I by that time I'd applied for a, for a license for the device I wasn't you wasn't using the sample period and I had no control. I couldn't get past the license issue. It kept coming up and saying, no license, no license. Anyway, after a lot of discussion with Remote Rig, they finally gave up on me and said, we can't make it work with your phone. I did find out by some fluke that if I, if I messed around with it, I pressed it four times, sometimes the phone started working and it worked perfectly after that. I also had taken a phone away from one of my daughters for some reason. <laughs> and it was still running on the old old operating system. So I tried that out, and that worked fine. And then it got operated, and that was the end of that. Um, but anyway, it's supposed to work on all Android systems, but it does not work on the S7 or the S6. I say the S7 because I thought, well, there's a chance if I go down and upgrade to an S7, it'll work. So I went in, no, it doesn't work. Anyway.
The other thing that, you, that can be done here is to turn, is to control the radio via the PC. And this we have here a setup that will link um, will link to the radio by the PC rock, either by ham radio deluxe or by the K3 suite. Uh, I guess I would like to interrupt you for a minute and disconnect that. You can have it back. I'm not taking it away. I just got to turn it off. There's too many. So I've turned that off now. That's disconnected the radio because the radio will not talk to two at once. It won't. It has an objection to that. Anyway, if I now turn, if I now connect this to it, now this is connected, this computer, to the radio, and if I go on to here, and, and I have, um, this is Win4K3. I don't particularly like this program because it doesn't allow very much control of the frequency. Um, but I think you get, can see that this is also another control. Now, in this case, we're not using any of the other craft control sections. It's purely using an external connection to the computer and either, in the case of Elecraft, you can use the, Ele the Win for Elecraft, Win for K3 suite, or you can use Ham, Ra Ham Radio Deluxe. Both of those will control the radio. Um, <coughs> it's a very good question. The reason I played with this is because it, there is a serious cost difference. This this little this little gadget here is two hundred dollars, and this program. Is fifty dollars, so it's two hundred and fifty dollars, and it does all what that thousand dollar setup set does. Now, let me take that back a little bit. It does close to what that does. There are a few things that are an issue. One of them is, as you saw that I showed you the antenna tuner that's on the tower. That that tuner tunes the low tunes the low frequency antenna. This cannot read the SWR on the transmitter. And that becomes important because you can't see whether the antenna tuner has worked or not and then you don't know what you're radiating, radiating, radiating into. And that particular antenna is really bad. It's a, although, it's, although it's a big antenna, it's, it's close to end fed, which means that it has to be exactly tuned for it to work. When it is tuned exactly, it works really well, but if it's slightly off, it's really bad. So you have no way of knowing whether the antenna is tuned or not. And being as if you're running the, the amplifier on here, you're putting, you're putting 500 watts in what may be an unknown antenna and you're not even there. That's not a particularly clever thing to do. So that becomes an issue. If this device will, will indicate the, the uh, SWR on the antenna and will tune everything beautifully. It really works really well. Uh, I've had I was had some discussions today with Tom who designed this program and I guess it comes down to can we bug Elecraft enough to give the information to be able to to use this 
this program to control the, 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 the transmitter. They have their own. They're, they're, well, yeah, they may not have the incentive to do it. This is a worldwide program, though. There's a lot of people out there, and if they listen fairly well to, to uh, complaints and issues, so I don't know, but we have to go through that now. But and this the the program that goes that's on on this device is um, is about thirty five dollars I think for that device. Um, now if I, I go back here and shut that down now again, that has turned the radio off at the house. It's all off. I can come back over here, reconnect this one, and this one will come back on. This particular program is not as nice as it looks, and sometimes I have to fiddle with it to get it to work. It's called Nana Nana. Okay, I'll let him play with that just for a little bit and then I'm going to take it back again. Keep taking it back.